EVs, BEVs, PEVs, HEVs, PHEVs, AEs, AEVs, ICEs, and I'll throw in another one, ECEs, external combustion engine vehicles. It can all get a little bit confusing, can't it? Look, I think all these acronyms definitely have their place, but I think it's much more helpful to think of EVs in terms of categories, or five groups in particular. And I'll go through all five groups of EVs, but before I do, just a quick note, I'm not necessarily categorizing EVs in any chronological order, because if I did, we'd have to go right back. And when I say right back, I'm not talking about the late 90s to the likes of the GM EV1. I'm not even talking about the late 70s to the likes of the City Car or even the Lunar Rover. You know, that was a BEV or a battery electric vehicle. We'd actually have to go right back to the middle of the 19th century because few people realize, but EVs were actually some of the first cars ever made. In fact, by the 1900s, EVs held about a 30 to 40% market share of all cars on the road. Um, and interestingly, internal combustion engines uh, only had about an 8 to 10% market share. But if you, if you would like to know more about the history of EVs, I'll put up another video titled First EVs. Um, so look out for that one. Um, so whether I upload that one first or this one first, one or the other will be the first or the second uh, YouTube video I've ever made. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell to, to get notified of, of videos as and when they come out. But let's talk about the five groups. So what I'll do is I'll run through the five groups fairly quickly and then we can go into more depth in terms of each group. So category number one, HEVs or hybrid electric vehicles. These cars had a very small battery and the purpose of the battery was really just to lower the emissions of the vehicle. Category two, we're talking about PHEVs or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, where now the battery is larger, so you need to be able to have the ability to plug the vehicle in because regenerative braking alone is not enough to recharge the battery. Then we get into the third category and this is where things really change because the battery now is the main source of propulsion for the vehicle. And now the internal combustion engine starts playing second, second fiddle to the battery rather than the other way around. Fourth generation or fourth category EVs is what I'm driving now. Um, and that's the Volt. Um, you know, it's called the Holden Volt in Australia or the Chevrolet or the Chevy Volt in the US or the Opel Emperor in, in Europe. Fifth category of EVs, we're talking about BEVs or battery electric vehicles, which are full EVs, you know, all the Teslas being a great example. So there you have it. There's the five groups of EVs, but let's now go into a little bit more depth about each category. Okay, category one, EVs. So these were hybrid electric vehicles or HEVs for short. A perfect example is something like the Toyota Prius, the first generation Prius, which came out in 1997 uh, in Japan. Um, it came out a year or two later um, in the US and in Europe. The Honda Insight is another example uh, that came out in the late 90s, I think it was as well. So these cars were categorized by a very small battery. And really the only purpose of the EV component of the vehicle was to lower emissions. There really was no other um, reason uh, for having the battery in the car. In fact, the battery was so small that it was purely and wholly sufficient to recharge the entire battery through nothing but regenerative braking. What is regen braking? I've made another video titled Regenerative Braking Explained, where we dive into a conceptual explanation of regen braking. We talk about how it works, its efficiency, its effectiveness, and I quote some figures around that as well. I'll leave a link in the description or the comment section below, so make sure you check that one out as well. Okay, as I mentioned, the one defining feature of hybrid electric vehicles, the first generation EVs or category one EVs, was a very small battery. 
which really only had a single purpose, and that was to reduce or improve the economy of the vehicle, hence lowering emissions. Now, one of the benefits of a small battery, though, was that it drove down the costs of the vehicle because the single most expensive component of an EV is the battery pack. The other advantage was that there was no need for a plug because regenerative braking alone was sufficient to recharge the whole battery. However, all this did come at a cost, obviously, and that was quite a odd driving experience, quite an odd driving style. Um, the problem is that when pressure is applied to the throttle, there's quite a disconnect between that and the resulting engine noise, and there's quite a lag between the two. It's probably a little bit difficult to explain, so what I'll do is I'll show you what I mean. So in a minute, I'll be quiet so that you can hear the engine noise in the background, and on the count of three, I'll put my foot all the way down, so press the throttle all the way down to the, thro to the floor, pedal to the metal, and hopefully you'll be able to hear what I mean. So on three, one, two, three. Okay, as you can hopefully hear in the background there, the, there is quite a noticeable delay, quite a noticeable uh, lag between the two, and it really makes for quite an unusual driving experience, as I said, and it does take quite a bit of getting used to. In fact, I've had the Volt for four years now, and in four years, I don't think I've ever got used to it. To, to be fair though, I, I don't drive the Volt in hold mode all that often, so perhaps that's the reason why, but there really is quite a difference between driving a hybrid electric vehicle or even driving a fourth generation EV like the Volt and driving it in the hold mode, in the internal combustion engine mode versus in EV mode. So as a contrast, as a comparison, what I'll do is I'll turn around here and I'll go to exactly the same spot where I was before. So you get a like for like um, compar comparison between the two. So let me just reverse this back. All right, let me just get up to the spot where I was just before, which is right here. So I'll slow down now, just make sure that we're in EV mode. Yes, we are. Okay. I'll do the same. I'll press the throttle all the way to the th floor on the count of three. One, two, three. I'll take my foot off on three. One, two, three. Apply it again. One, two, three. Take my foot off. One, two, three. So as you can hear, there's quite a difference between the two driving modes, between the true two driving experiences. You know, it's it's light years apart. You know, in the EV mode, you get that instant torque, which is available right throughout the whole range. It's always there, available on demand whenever you want it. Whereas in the internal combustion engine mode, although the vehicle is still being powered by the battery, um, it, it gets the power gets governed down because it needs to adjust for the um, for the battery not being at full charge because it's obviously still being recharged from the internal combustion engine. Examples of hybrid electric vehicles, especially those available in Australia at the moment, Toyota, for instance, they've got at least three models. They've got the Toyota Corolla which is a good example of a hybrid electric vehicle. Another example is the Toyota Camry, which is a perfect example of a uh, Category 1 EV, as is the first generation Toyota Prius. Hyundai also make a, a hybrid version of the Ioniq, and there's plenty of other examples as well. So that gives you an idea of what a hybrid electric vehicle was. So categorized by a very small battery, which was recharged purely through the regenerative braking. Category two, 
so the difference there was just the size of the battery so now the battery was a little bit larger so you needed to have the ability to plug the car into a GPO a general power outlet an electrical socket in the wall or a, or a car charger in order to be able to recharge the battery because um, the larger capacity meant that regen braking was no longer sufficient but just like with category 1 EVs really the whole purpose of the EV, EV component was just to lower emissions but what was very different is once we get into category 3 EVs and this is where everything has been flipped back to front so no longer is the internal combustion engine the main source of propulsion for the vehicle um, it's it's now the battery and now the internal combustion engine um, is really just serving two purposes so the first is to provide extra power in certain situations such as when you're towing another vehicle or a caravan or you're going uphill or you're overtaking a car or driving in a spirited manner or um, or all of the above all at the same time so that's when the internal combustion engine kicks in to help out the battery um, it, it, it works differently um, with different cars but um, mostly with something like the Mitsubishi Outlander which is a car that we also owned uh, for a couple of years in fact we had the Mitsubishi Outlander as well as the as well as the Holden Volt at the same time so we were a all EV family for a couple of years but unfortunately we had to sell the Outlander because we bought a fairly large caravan uh, it was one of the largest caravans you could pretty much buy in Australia it was um, well, you know almost three ton so um, unfortunately the Outlander wasn't large enough to pull that uh, to pull that caravan or tow it so um, category 3 EVs Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV perfect example so the battery does most of the work if there's enough charge in the battery except in those situations such as when you're towing the second re reason for the internal combustion engine is to serve as a range extender to power the battery or recharge the battery when it's run out of juice when it's run out of charge and getting to the fourth generation of evs such as the volt that i'm in now um, the difference between the third category and the fourth category is that the battery is large enough and powerful enough to power the vehicle in all driving situations except when the battery runs out of charge and so now the internal combustion engine serves only one role and that is as a range extender that is the the difference the main difference between category four and category three um, getting to category five we're now talking about bevs or battery electric vehicles pure evs if you like so all the teslas are a perfect example of a bev uh, nissan leaf mitsubishi imev uh, these are all examples um, jaguar ipace or even the audi e-tron or um, yeah. <laughs> elon musk uh, mentioned this in one of his um, uh, one of his speeches uh, it, look up what each one means in French or it uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce it in French because my French is uh, hopeless um, so uh, look it up but basically it means uh, turd uh, or poo <laughs> um, in in French so a um, bit of a uh, bit a bit of a boo-boo there by um, Audi that's for sure in, in naming, naming that vehicle um, there's been a few things uh, the Porsche uh, Taycan just came out recently and interestingly they call that the Taycan Turbo and the premium model they called the called it the Taycan Turbo S now the way a turbo works is it recycles exhaust gases the Taycan is a pure EV it doesn't have an exhaust um, you know no EVs have a tailpipe because they don't have internal combustion engine engines so not sure why they named it that but um yeah elon um, mentioned had a mention about that on uh, twitter recently as well um so yeah you've got to scratch your head sometimes with um with some of the naming conventions um of different different cars um so but look 
there you have it. There's the five categories of EVs. You know, I'll, I'll just run quickly through all of them. So category one, HEVs, very small battery, sufficient to recharge it through regenerative braking alone. Uh, category two uh, is, P, is a PHEV, uh, as is category three and category four. The difference is category two, very small battery, um, and the battery is assisting the internal combustion engine. Category three, everything is flipped the other way around. So the battery does most of the driving and the internal combustion engine just helps in situations when there is no juice in the battery or when the car requires extra power. Uh, and that's the difference with category four. In, with a category four EV, such as the Volt, um, you, the battery is large enough, so you never, the internal combustion engine never has to take over to provide power for the vehicle. The only time it takes over is if you put it into hold mode manually, or if um, the battery is run out of juice. So it purely serves as a range extender and has no other purpose. And then we get to category five, which are BEVs, battery electric vehicles. Some will argue that we're up to the sixth generation of EVs, but uh, I would say that that starts getting into the realm of autonomy or, or um, AEVs, autonomous electric vehicles. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's the topic of my next video. So um, my next video will be about the five levels of autonomy, at least as defined by the SAE, the Society of Automotive, Automotive Engineers, um, because I think their definition is the most uh, credible. A quick reminder, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, how exciting if you're thinking about buying a tesla make sure you use a referral code it doesn't have to be my code can be anyone's because that way you'll get 1500 kilometers or a thousand miles of free supercharging which could definitely come in handy now i'll be honest i prefer if you use my code that way i'll get a an entry into a draw to win a Tesla Roadster the next generation Roadster which I think is going to be an absolutely fantastic car we're talking a thousand kilometers of range zero to 60 miles an hour or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in about two seconds the the founder series will have cold gas thrusters so I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal now I'm not sure what the chances are but should I win one I'll undertake to do exactly what ludicrous Tom has done which I think is a fantastic idea he's over in Sydney I'm here in Perth but should I win one I'll undertake to do the same and that's to put the car up onto a car sharing website that way anyone can rent the car for a few days take it for a spin experience this groundbreaking technology for themselves so i'll include the referral link or the referral code in the description or the comment section down below this video so look out for it there feel free to share with anyone else that you know and feel free to share this video with anyone that you think may get some value out of it i hope you got some value out of it if you did give it a thumbs up and make sure you also subscribe and press the no notification bell. That way you'll get alerted to any new videos as and when they come out. So stay safe, stay sustainable and stay ahead of the curve. Ciao.